Like, bro. She got, she got a kid. Look at his back. Oh my god. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another reaction, and today we're gonna be reacting to Joe Rogan. When did SJW culture start? Damn, man, I I don't really have an idea. When did SJW culture? Start? I know I really like start getting introduced to it and like talking about it when I was, whenever I was in high school. So about eleventh grade, it was really prominent. So I'll say like two thousand sixteen, you really start to see it. Be talking about more like in, like you see the news start to change and be affected by it now like like everything but if you're gonna hop right into this reaction make sure you hit that like button subscribe and share if you're enjoying our videos it's the road to 1k and let's go unfortunately uh i was i was reading that and then i got on a flight and i just wanted to zone out so i listened to this one on tape okay all right, well i'll tell you all about it uh but the key thing is that that book, The Coddling of the American Mind, was something that we wrote because Greg began observing this weird stuff happening in the university in 2014. It all starts in 2014. Um, most of your listeners have heard about safe spaces, microaggressions, bias response teams, trigger warnings, all that stuff. That stuff pre didn't exist before 2014. It just begins creeping in then, and then it kind of blows up in 2015. And 2015. so our whole book is an exploration of why. why. Why did this happen? And so to your question about was there an event, our answer is there are six different causal threads. There's like all these social trends, some going back to the 80s and 90s, that came together around 2014 so that students are a little different, and then there are certain forces acting on them that are different, and so you get this weird new game. You get this explosive mix. You get some students who are actually very drawn to grievance studies. Uh, and so uh, very briefly, like the, it's things like um, rising political polarization. So left and right never particularly liked each other. But in the 70s and 80s, if you look at surveys done of how much you hate people on the other side, it's not that intense. It begins going up in the, in the 80s, and then especially after 2000, it's going up very steeply. Uh, at the same time, university faculty, who have always leaned left throughout the 20th century, uh, but it was only a lean. And in the 90s, it begins shifting much further left, so that now, faculties, especially in the social sciences and humanities, are pretty purified. They're overwhelmingly on the left. So you have a more left-leaning university at a time when left-right hostility is getting more and more intense. And so any question that has a political valence, now there's a lot more people who want to do the football game. Not the truth-seeking game, mm. but that we got to defeat the other side. Don't give me nuance. Don't give me data. We know what we believe, and damn it, we're going to, yeah. you know. So, so you got this changing political situation. Then you've got a couple of threads about what we've done to kids. So um, uh, I've, I've got this is a whole other area of conversation, of course. But we basically took away free play and gave them social media. The same, basically, kids who were born in 1995 and after Gen Z, they had really different childhoods, and they're not as prepared for conflict and, and college. We'll get into that later. But you put all these things together, you get kids who are much more anxious and fragile, much more depressed. Um, coming onto campus at a time of much greater political activism, and now these grievance studies ideas about America as a matrix of oppression and, and look at the world in terms of good versus evil, it's more appealing to them. And it's that minority of students. They're the ones who are initiating a lot of the movements. It's such a strange time to be on the outside and watch this because a person like myself has always counted on intellectuals and professors and people like yourself to sort of make sense of things and yeah. to uh, reinforce the idea that freedom of speech and free debate are critical aspects to knowledge. And one of the things that's most disturbing what you, you see in schools is people that are even marginally right-leaning or centrist mm -hmm. being called Nazis yeah. and being silenced and they're pulling fire alarms when they're speaking. Even people what? like Christina Hoff Summers, who's a, a feminist, fire gets alarms. shouted down and, and people yelling at her and calling her fascist. Uh -huh. It's just very strange. Yeah, I, I would say my school was definitely more left-leaning, man. Uh, I wouldn't even say they were particularly like super left. Like My school taught us about the uh, necessity of knowing bias within the media and how some media genres will have uh, a certain outlook because they feel you have a political party. 
And uh, obviously the teachers had their own political thoughts and stuff like that. So that was somewhat introduced into the teaching. Well, I don't know. You still had an open mind. You're still able to keep an open mind within that. It's very strange to watch from the outside, and it's also very strange to not see any pushback by the professors. So sitting here and seeing this happen and thinking, well, these poor kids, they're they're going to have to go into the workplace. They're going to have to. They're, they're, right now, they're in this very insulated environment. They're going to escape that environment when they graduate, and then they're either going to push this ideology uh, into the workforce, which you do see now. That's it. Exactly. Especially with tech in the companies. Last piece, that's yeah. Right. That's right. No, that's right. It, I, I know it's strange to look at it from the outside. Believe me, it's stranger from the inside. Mm. Um, but one thing I can say that, um, that might be helpful here is that from the outside, what you see is the news reports. And the news reports are going to be very selective. And so especially what happens is because, you know, universities have always leaned left, and so the right-leaning media have always been suspicious. So the right-leaning media has huge coverage of every little thing and sometimes it's it's exaggerated. Sometimes it's misinterpreted. Um, but for the most time, there was something there. Left leaning media tends to ignore it, and so I go around the country, and you know, people on the right expect that, oh my God, it's chaos and mob violence on campus, which isn't true. That's an exaggeration. And the left is like, problem? What problem? There's nothing changing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the key thing to keep in mind here is that there's about 4,500 institutions of higher education in this country. Most of them are not selective schools. They'll take anyone. Um, and in those schools, not much is happening. Um, but if you go to the elite liberal arts colleges in the Northeast and the West Coast, then usually something is happening. And so um, at Heterodox Academy, it's a group that I co-founded of professors that are pushing back. It's bipartisan. We have as many people on the, on the left as on the right. Um, we created a map of where all the shout-outs have taken place. And they're all right in the Northeast or along the Pacific Coast, like from you know, Evergreen you know, down to you know, Berkeley and all that. Uh, and then a couple in Chicago. So from in most of the country, this stuff is not happening. Most schools, the culture hasn't really changed much. But at the top schools, in general, it has. Um, so that's one thing to just keep in mind. There is a moral panic on the right about this, which doesn't mean that there's not something real. There really is a, a huge problem. But it's not as pervasive as it's sometimes made out to be. So is it akin to looking at violence in the news media? Like you, you, when you read about violence in terms of robberies and murders, in general, you're not going to encounter much in your life. No. The, the world is a large place. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you concentrate like, on these really bad moments. Yeah, it's a little bit like that, except that, um, you know, um, one of the reasons that we took child, we took free play away from kids is that we were afraid that they'd be abducted. And that almost, never, that was so rare. Uh, and, but we got a lot of coverage of that in the 80s and 90s. And we changed our behavior because of that. And that was a gross over. Yeah, maybe we want to break this up into two parts, but yeah, this is very interesting, and all of this is true. But it's crazy that this came around in like 2015, I guess. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time on LBB. Peace.